When you picture iconic fighter jets, the F-14 Tomcat immediately comes to mind. Thanks to films like Top Gun and The Final Countdown, it's earned a legendary status, launching countless naval aviator careers. But here's the kicker. The F-14 wasn't truly built to dogfight. Its mission? To prevent dogfights from ever happening in the first place. Back in the 1,960 seconds, the U.S. Navy faced a serious headache, a wave of Soviet supersonic bombers and deadly anti-ship missiles. Their solution? Build a jet that could lug six massive missiles, each tipping the scales at half a ton, zip through the sky at over twice the speed of sound, and, oh yes, still manage a safe landing on an aircraft carrier. No pressure, right? In 1968, Congress pulled the plug on the F-111B interceptor, originally meant to tackle this mission. Too costly, too heavy, too sluggish. Enter the F-14 Tomcat, rushed into service to plug the gap. But here's where it gets wild. One F-14 once took down three enemy planes with a single missile. In the story behind its Tomcat name, why more than 28% of crashes were engine-related, how pilots managed precise 50-round bursts, and why almost every retired F-14 was shredded, is not what you'd expect. At the heart of the design was a massive missile, the 1,000-pound, 1-3-foot-long Phoenix AIM-54. The Tomcat had to carry up to six of these beasts, which explains why the plane itself was enormous, visible from 10 miles away. Turns out, all that missile-carrying firepower was almost wasted. The Tomcat's swing wings meant nothing could hang off the moving parts. That left just enough space for one Phoenix missile under each wing box. So, where did the other four go? Engineers cleverly tucked them beneath the fuselage. To make it fit while keeping drag minimal, the engines had to be spaced a whopping nine feet apart, wide enough for two pairs of Phoenix missiles side by side. But that wide body came with a bonus. The extra surface area allowed the fuselage to generate between 25 and 60% of the aircraft's lift, depending on wing sweep and missile load. That fuselage lifting body feature saved an F-14 inches 1,000, 991, allowing it to land even after losing more than half its right wing in a mid-air collision. But spacing the engines so far apart brought a serious risk. If one engine suddenly failed, asymmetric thrust could spin the jet, or worse, trigger a flat spin, where the plane rotates horizontally while plummeting straight down. Before the 1,980 seconds, a flat spin in the F-14 was essentially unrecoverable. The only option? Eject. Even that wasn't safe. In fact, that's exactly how Goose died in Top Gun. In a flat spin, forward momentum disappears, and a jettisoned canopy can hover dangerously above fatal if a pilot ejects into it. To prevent disaster, the Navy added a new rule to emergency bailout checklists. Manually jettison the canopy, pause two seconds, then pull the ejection handles. And yes, the F-14 had terrible engines, as the Secretary of the Navy bluntly told Congress in the 1,980 seconds. And he wasn't exaggerating, over 28% of F-14 crashes were traced back to engine failures. After the F-111B program was canceled, the Navy had to push the Tomcat into production in just 22 months to meet contractual deadlines. The engines originally designed for the F-14 didn't even exist yet. So Grumman improvised, installing leftover Pratt & Whitney TF-30 engines from the F-111B. Problem was, these engines were built for a lumbering bomber, not a nimble fighter, making compressor stalls a frequent nightmare, especially during sudden maneuvers or tricky carrier landings. It wasn't until the F-14 B and D variants arrived 
powered by General Electric F110 engines, that the Tomcat finally got reliable thrust. The upgrade delivered a 32% boost in power, transforming performance and safety. That's essentially a 1 to 1 thrust to weight ratio. With improved reliability and fuel efficiency, the upgraded engines extended the FUA-14's range by 60%. Even better, the Tomcat could now launch from a carrier without firing up the afterburners. Its larger airframe also allowed for more internal fuel 16,000 pounds tucked inside the tanks, enabling a cruising range of 1,600 nautical miles at Mach 0.72. Sounds impressive, right? But push it to sea level at Mach 2 with afterburners, and that fuel evaporates in just 6 to 8 minutes. This is why mid-air refueling isn't optional, it's mission critical. And those rectangular air intakes? Think of them like the jet's mouth. Supersonic airflow can literally choke the engines if not managed. It's kind of like a skydiver forgetting to close their mouth during freefall. Not exactly a fun experiment. The Pratt and Whitney TF-30 engines were notoriously finicky. To stop compressor stalls at transonic speeds, engineers installed three computer-controlled ramps inside each F-14 engine inlet. These ramps meticulously slowed incoming air to the perfect velocity for any Mach number. The rectangular shape of the Tomcat's massive intakes wasn't random, it mirrored the geometry of these ramps perfectly. Another signature feature? The F-14's variable sweep wings. Grumman designed an automatic swing wing system guided by aviation's very first microprocessor. This technology adjusted the wing sweep to the ideal angle for any flight speed, giving the Tomcat unmatched versatility in the sky. Naturally, pilots could override the system and adjust the wing sweep manually, but the computer handled the heavy lifting, letting them focus on everything else. During low-speed maneuvers, like takeoff and landing, the wings extended forward to 20 degrees, boosting lift and agility. At high speeds, the wings swept back to 68 degrees, slashing drag and enhancing supersonic performance, giving the Tomcat that unmistakable triangular silhouette. On the flight deck, the FOI-14 could oversweep its wings to 75 degrees, allowing five jets to squeeze side by side, sardine style, on a Nimitz-class carrier. But this cutting-edge tech came at a cost. For every hour in the air, crews needed 40 to 60 hours of painstaking maintenance to keep these machines mission ready. If one wing ever malfunctioned, the F-14 could still fly with asymmetrical sweep and even make a carrier landing talk about engineering magic. As pilots lined up for touchdown, the flurry of flight controls moving and popping up looked like enormous feathers flapping in the wind, earning the jet its quirky nickname, Turkey. Officially, though, it was the Tomcat. Grumman had a cat-themed naming tradition. Hellcat, Wildcat, Panther, and since the two men who pushed Congress to approve the plane were both named Tom, the name was a perfect fit. The F-14's AIM-54 Phoenix missiles truly shined when linked with the AN divided by AWG-9 radar. Together, they transformed beyond visual range air combat letting the Tomcat track and engage multiple enemy aircraft with deadly precision before anyone even saw them coming. The AUG-9's fire control system featured a massive 36-inch antenna housed in the Tomcat's nose, capable of locking onto 24 targets simultaneously. Hit the launch button, and a Phoenix missile would rocket toward its prey up to 100 nautical miles away, blazing past Mach 5. At roughly 11 miles from the target, the Phoenix would switch on its own radar, autonomously tracking and homing in without needing any guidance from the F-14. That's why pilots called it a fire-and-forget weapon.
When its 135-pound warhead detonated, any aircraft nearby didn't stand a chance. Trust me, the Iranian Air Force learned that lesson the hard way. But the Phoenix wasn't the only deadly option the Tomcat could carry under its wings. The F-14 could also carry a deadly mix of medium and short-range air-to-air missiles while on patrol, including AIM-9 Sidewinders and AIM-7 Sparrows. But there was one more surprise hiding under the wings. That's why the Tomcat's official logo shows a six-shooter strapped to the cat's left side. Replacing the F-4 Phantom, the Navy demanded the Tomcat have something the Phantom never had, a gun for close-quarters dogfighting. Back in Vietnam, Phantom pilots learned the hard way once all missiles were gone. Or, going Winchester, they had nothing left to fight with. Grumman answered that call with the M61 Vulcan, a 20mm, 6-barrel, hydraulically powered, rapid-fire cannon capable of spitting out over 6,000 rounds per minute. The F-14's M61 Vulcan was tucked neatly beneath the cockpit, its muzzle peeking out on the lower left side of the fuselage. At 6,000 rounds per minute, it could unleash a storm of lead. But the Tomcat carried only 676 rounds in its drum, meaning a full blast would last barely six seconds. Pilots weren't left helpless, though. Ground crews had a clever hack. While loading the ammo belt, they'd intentionally skip a slot every 50 rounds. This trick forced the gun to pause automatically giving the pilot a controlled burst with each trigger squeeze. Peace of mind, precision fire, and total chaos for any target caught in its path. To keep the F-14 balanced and prevent empty shells from damaging the engines, the ammunition drum cleverly held on to the spent casings instead of ejecting them. Despite its legendary status and versatile arsenal, the Tomcat barely scored in U.S. Navy aerial combat. Ironically, or should we say, ironically, the only other operator of the F-14 claimed between 130 and 150 confirmed air kills. Back in the 1,970 seconds, while still allied with the U.S., the Shah of Iran bought 80 farads, 14 seconds, fully loaded with Phoenix missiles. These jets became a game changer during the Iran-Iraq War from 1980 to 1988. In one remarkable engagement, an Iranian pilot took down three Iraqi Miji 23 seconds with a single Phoenix missile. That, ladies and gentlemen, is the power of proper combat spread. Fast forward to today. Iran stands alone as the only nation still flying the F-14. Today, it's believed that about 30 Iranian F-14 Tomcats are still airworthy, kept alive through cannibalized aircraft, smuggled components, and reverse-engineered tech from Russia. This is exactly why. When the U.S. Navy retired its Tomcats in 2006, nearly every single jet was shredded to stop spare parts from ending up in the Ayatollah's hangars. It might sound extreme, but the logic hits hard when you hear that two Tomcats, supposedly scrapped by a contractor in the 1,980 seconds, were discovered in 2016, abandoned in a field somewhere in Texas. And the kicker? The Tomcat's most famous feature carrying six massive Phoenix missiles was never actually used in combat by the US Navy, a jaw-dropping twist for such a legendary fighter. The thing is, if none of those Phoenix missiles had been fired, the FUA-14 would have been far too heavy to land safely back on a carrier. Yet, they did put this to the test back in 1973 one jet unleashed all six missiles in rapid succession. At the time, it went down as the priciest air-to-air -air missile test ever. And here's the real kicker. 
Despite 32 years of service with the U.S. Navy, not a single Phoenix missile was ever fired in actual fleet defense, a legendary capability, but one that never got its moment in combat. 